Winning one Champions League is the ultimate prize for a club, but we're going to be trying to win all three by completing a Pentagon Challenge. The goal of the challenge is to win the three Champions Leagues on FIFA, plus the MLS and the World Cup with an African team. And it's finally time for the World Cup. But as always, I won't be picking the teams I'll be using. Instead, I've asked my Discord which nations you'd like to see, and I'll let ChatGPT choose from the three most voted for options. So what team are we conquering the world with today? Over to ChatGPT. Well, it looks like Nigeria has triumphed over Morocco and Burkina Faso, so let's find out how we're going to be lining up for the 2026 USA World Cup. I really love this squad. The standout, of course, is Osimhen, but there is pace and power in every position. You might be wondering when we even got offered the Nigeria job, but we actually accepted it while we were still managing at St. Louis. This means we've been in charge of the team for nearly two years. We've played a couple of games here and there, including this one against Germany, which was actually our first match in charge. We do have a really good squad. Osimhen is like the third best striker in the game after Mbappe and Haaland. 90 rated now with 98 sprint speed and 97 acceleration. His finishing is really good as well. His strength's 91. He's basically the perfect all-around striker. We have a very physical team and we're probably the most physical team in Africa, but we were going to be starting our World Cup campaign against probably the most physical team in Europe, Serbia. You've seen Milinkovic Savic right there. We've got Vlahovic up front. Kostic on the wing can run and run. It's just an all-round very physical squad, so we're going to have to be our best if we're gonna win this one. You can see Osimhen and Chukwesi, these are gonna be huge players, but Calvin Basti at the back is gonna be just as important. Look at that flick on there from Osimhen to open the scoring. We like getting our midfielders past our strikers, and you can see why when Onya Dicker is scoring shots like that. Onya Dicker's on the ball again right here, pulled it across to Osimhen, but look at this dribbling. For a six foot two target man, he's basically impossible to get the ball off. Okoya is a pretty underrated goalkeeper as well. He's only 77 overall, but he's one of the best I've used on this FIFA. Calvin Bassi yet again being an absolute boss and Osimhen yet again scoring a good goal. So that's two already after 48 minutes in this World Cup. He's probably going for the golden boot, let's be honest. He is about that Harry Kane level where he's the main man in the team and he can actually score a ton of goals. Serbia would, of course, threaten. Kostic with a the volley there could have gone in. But look at that touch from Osimhen to pass it through to Dennis. And Dennis isn't going to miss a one on one like that. Flicked it round the corner. Nothing that the Serbian defenders can do there. And we just had too much pace. We made it 4 0 with yet another brilliant shot from Osimhen, this time flicking it off the outside of his boot into the corner. But there was still time for Serbia to score. And a really unfortunate defensive mistake there. Saw Maksimovic rise highest and score a header. But at 4 1, we're not going to complain when we didn't even qualify for the last World Cup. Our toughest game of the group stage was definitely this one against Brazil. No other strikers managed to score two goals in their first game, so Osimhen goes straight in as the top scorer. But it was going to be really early on that we saw a familiar face. You might remember Pedro who scored the winning goal in our Copa Libertadores final, but we injured Gabriel Jesus so early on that he came on after just three minutes. Look at the press that we were getting from Brazil right here. They were forcing us into mistakes. We weren't making any shots. We could barely make a pass and you could just see how much better Brazil were than Serbia. We got a nice chance here though. Osimhen not quite being fast enough. Maybe if he was 99 pace, we score there. On the Adika proved that he is actually a defense midfielder and not a box to box midfielder. But Matias Franca could have put Brazil ahead not only once there, but also twice here. I'm not sure if he was offside, but it was yet another good save from Okoye. Taiwo Awanyi would play through Osimhen and he would actually put the ball in the back of the net. But somehow it was just offside, very marginal decision, but Awanyi would get through yet again. And this time there'd be no need for VAR, no need for offside. Against the favorites, Awanyi would run through and in front of the Brazil fans, look at their disgust right there. He would put Nigeria 1-0 up and top of their group. Now winning the group probably wasn't that important because we were gonna be playing whoever finished second out of France and Italy. So it was always gonna be a tough game. But we did basically end any chance Brazil had of winning the tournament because we knocked Jesus out for two months. So that's the group we'll be playing second place in and that's our group. So you can see we're very much in the commanding position. We decided to rest basically all of our good players. So Osimhen was on the bench replaced by Moffi. We had a one year in for Dennis. We had basically our entire defense was changed for second choice but we were still making chance after chance. This formation seems to really work. Paraguay would do something that Brazil couldn't though, and Sebas would put them 1-0 up. 
Him and Almiron were linking up really well and it really could have been 2-0 right there just before half time. So we went a little bit more attacking. We did want to win our group even though it didn't matter too much. We nearly got a penalty right there and a one yeet would equalize in the 49th minute. A really good finish. I'm really enjoying using Taiwo a one yeet. Another good save from Akoyi kept it 2-1 and finally it was time for our good players to come on. Unfortunately a one yeet did get injured. He was a massive part of why we were playing well recently. Him at left wing and Osimen right here doing finishes like that. It's a very physical and very dangerous combination. Something dangerous that Paraguay did though was they put their goalkeeper at front and put a defender in goal. I have absolutely no idea why they did this. It did nearly work because the goalkeeper did nearly score right there. But they were so good at getting their foot in the way or just blocking shots, we didn't actually get a shot in against their five foot six goalkeeper. But still, we'd win the game 2-1 despite their unusual tactics. This meant we were going to be playing Italy in the round of 16. Berardi, Keane and Chiesa might not be as good as some of the front threes they've put out there in the past, but it was still going to be dangerous and it was probably the first time that a team would have a faster attack than our defense with 80 pace all throughout our defense we were going to have to keep an eye on them to make sure they couldn't counter on us and we were still in charge. Osimen did some nice touches right there but the ball fell to Dennis and unfortunately he hit it instead of Osimen well wide of the goal. Chukwizi is by far our best creative player and he tried a nice creative shot right there outside the boot nearly found the top corner but Donnarumma is always saving that. We tried long shots every now and then just to see if we could get one of those World Cup special goals that always seems to go in. But it was Moise Keane who would score the first goal in this game. He put them 1-0 up. He just found that space between our goalkeeper's knee and our goalkeeper's elbow, found the back of the net, and Italy were in charge in this one. But of course, we have a lot of players who play in Italy, like Osimen right here. He could have equalized it, honestly. He probably should have done one-on-one -on -one with his stats, but unfortunately for us, he couldn't quite do it. The corner header came in, another really good save from Donnarumma. This time, Osimen would get through one-on-one, -on -one, and this time, he would find the back of the net. So with an hour gone, it was shaping up to be a really nice match. 1-1 one -one between Italy and Nigeria. Daniel Calabria would find Barella, good save from Akoya, how many times have we said that already, and Moise Keane couldn't quite get away from our defender. Osimen again proven how important his pace is, but the ball wouldn't quite rebound for us. Before Chukwizi would play this through to Dennis, his volley would have been absolutely spectacular in the last minute, but this is going to extra time. Both teams would have an early chance, that one from Moise Keane and this one from Adamola Lukman, who would play through on Yeka. With Osimen easily in position to cut it back to, there was only one option, he needed to guarantee the goal. 95 minutes, Nigeria 2. Italy won. Osimen with yet another goal. I believe that's his fifth of the tournament. But you did have the feeling there was probably at least one more goal in this game. Italy were playing really good football. I mean, Moise Keane, yet again, one on one, couldn't quite finish it off. But Adamola Lukman could. When he went round Donnarumma, he was only ever going to score into the open net. And that would mean Nigeria were 3 1 up. And that would mean Nigeria are through to the quarterfinals. They'd be playing in the LA Galaxy Stadium against Turkey. So it was going to be a really big match. And if we could win this somehow, we'd be playing against England or Argentina in the semi-final. Two teams who are very weak against our physical style of play. So we had a real good chance if we could get through this one. Turkey would have a decent couple of chances. They had Enes Unal up front, who we managed to smash early on. We have Dennis up front for us, of course, and he doesn't seem like he's very good at finishing on this year's game. Osimhen, of course, is though. And yet again, he scores an offside header. This is very annoying because that would have been his seventh goal of the tournament, and it probably would have made things a lot more secure for us. Osimhen really could have scored that one. He scored harder in this tournament already before Enes Unal did a few ball rolls, found Kochu, and of course the rebound would fall to Ridvan. He's in the team of the tournament already and goals like that is just going to secure his place. An injured Chukwueze really could have scored again off the post and bounced out so he did some off for Lukman who had a really good game in the last match. With no Awanyi to bring on at left wing, we tried Moffi and he nearly found Osimen, which probably would have gone in if he had connected with his header, but we were on all out attack right now. Nigeria wanted a goal and Yeka getting into the box dragging his shot wide. Joe Rebo would power forwards with just one minute to go. He had two men in the middle. He would find Osimen, the exact man you want. But that's not the finish he would ever want. And that basically meant this shot was their last chance Nigeria had of staying in the World Cup. So this means that is Nigeria out of the 2026 World Cup. 
Of course, we will get at least two other goes in 2030, which is being hosted in England on this save, and 2034. So that means we'll have to use one of those two chances to win the competition if we want to compete the Pentagon Challenge. We'll be back with part two of this coming out very soon, but in the meantime, because we do have to wait four years, we will actually be playing our European part of the save, and that'll be coming out just before the World Cup. I think the World Cup will probably be the final episode of this series. But thank you, as I said every time on these episodes, for your support. Hope you enjoyed them. Thanks for watching. Cheers and goodbye.